Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about the route attribute. So with the route attribute you can attach it to controllers and actions to specify their route. This is kind of a, an alternative way to specifying how to get to a particular action or controller without using the templates that we set up in the startup class. Now you can set up your routes by either specifically naming the route to get to that controller or action, or you can also use the controller or action token, which is just simply controller or action inside of these straight brackets. Now, if you use the controller or action token, you're essentially saying use the name of this class or use the name of this method as the name of the controller or the name of the action. And that's similar to how we had it set up in the template when we were setting it up in the startup class. Now you can also use a blank string to indicate the default controller or action. And finally, you can express parameters inside of curly braces. So to see all of this in action, let's go ahead and hop into our Visual Studio window and take a look. So for this demonstration, I'm actually gonna go ahead and comment out this routes Lambda expression. And that's just gonna leave the use MVC with no parameters being passed into it. And this is perfectly acceptable. You can use the MVC middleware like this. It just means that you're not gonna have any sort of routes that are mapped to it. And you'll have to use the route attribute for anything to be identified within MVC. So we're gonna to go to the member home controller and to use the route attribute, I'm gonna go up above the member home controller class here, and I'm gonna say inside of straight brackets, route. Now, route is only available by using the microsoft.aspnet.mvc namespace. So you can see I have my using up here, uh, and that's what makes route the route attribute available for me. Inside of the route attribute, I need to pass along a parameter, and you can see it says string template. So I need to pass along a template, but the template's a little different, but very similar to what we did here in our startup class when we map mapped our routes here. It's just a little different. Instead of uh, giving it the full, uh, you know, passing along inside of the curly braces, the controller and action, I'm just going to specify that to get to this member home controller. All you have to do is type members as part of the URL. So let's go ahead and save this. And this should be the, the part of the URL that comes after the host, obviously, because we're specifying that this controller name is actually members. So let's go ahead and save this and run this. Now we'll start off with a 404 error when this first comes up. And that's because we don't have any sort of default that's being mapped here. Remember, we took out our routing, right? We took out this default configuration and we're specifying that the member, the, the member home has a member's route, but there's really no way for MVC to know that this old home controller with the index action should be our default. So we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video, but for right now, you can go up to your URL and just simply type members and that will take us to our this is a members only section HTML. So by using the members route, by setting the route attribute to members, it took us to this member home controller. Now, what do you suppose would happen if I did members forward slash index? Well, that's strange. How did we get a 404 error? Well, once again, if you think about it, it's not all that strange at all because index would indicate that you're trying to tell MVC that index is the action. But how is MVC going to know that index is even an action? There's nothing, there's no template either here in the startup or any definition here inside of my member home controller that tells it that there is any action that it's even receiving. So why did the index work the first time? Why did this index method work when we just type members? Well, that's because we only have one method and it was smart enough to figure out that if we only have one method, let's go ahead and run that method if this route gets called. But now that we specified in the URL here that it should go to the index 
action and there's no way for MVC to pick up an action, it doesn't know that we want to go to this index controller. But let's go ahead and say, uh, change that. So we'll do here on our index method, we'll do route and this route is called index. Now we can save this and run this again. And now we'll do members forward slash index. And there we go. We're back to this is a members only section. But what happens if we take off the index? Let's try that. We're back to a 404 error. So MVC is not able to locate the, the action that it's supposed to execute on this members controller. So we kind of have to solve this and we can do that by adding the default attribute. So the, or saying that the route attribute has a default and we can do that just by simply saying as another attribute, because we can have, we can stack attributes on a method. So we're just going to say open and closed, just a straight blank string inside of that we're passing into our route. So let's go ahead and save this and run it again. So now let's try members without the index. And we'll see this is a members only section. So by having this blank string as a route attribute, it said, okay, index is our default on the members controller. And then once again, if we do forward slash index, it's going to give us this is a members only section. So we're able to specify that this index method should be the index action as well as the default action on our members controller. So now that we know that, we can use once again this route with a blank string and put it on our home controller because we wanted this to be our default when the host first ran. So, uh, or when our application first ran, this is going to be our default. So we'll do route with a blank string for both our controller and route with a blank string for our index. Let's save this and run this. And now our application recognizes that the default controller is the home controller and the default action on our home controller is index and so work perfectly hi there steve bishop your id is zero but now we're stuck back with well what if i want to do home forward slash index and i want to pass along 14. we get a 404 error again so we need to figure out some way of passing along a parameter so i'm going to go ahead and go back into our application let's stop this and I need to go ahead and add the attributes that this should be also, not only should it be the default, but we wanna do route, this is our home, because it can be accessed either as the default or as the home controller. And we also wanna do route, this is also our index. And now we need to pass along that if somebody wants to pass in an integer as an ID, they should be able to do that. And I'm actually going to make this another route attribute altogether. So I'm going to say route index. And now I'm going to say forward slash. And inside of curly braces, just like we set up with the template in our startup class, I'm just going to say ID there. And I don't need to do the question mark because I already have the index one here. So it's it's already optional in the way that I've defined my attributes. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and run this. And now if I do home forward slash index forward slash 14, we get, hi there, Steve Bishop, your ID is 14. So there you go. You have done the home index and ID passed in a parameter and you've set up the members index using the route attribute. But there's one last thing I want to show you. And if we go ahead and exit out of this, there's kind of a way that we can actually do something similar to the way that we did the templates in our startup class. So I'm going to go on our member home controller here and I'm going to go ahead and change this from members to controller forward slash action. And I'm going to save this. And now the controller token should 
find, based upon the URL that I type in, that member home is the name of my controller, and then it should look for the action that I put in the URL as well. So let's go ahead and save that and run this. And now instead of going to the members, if I tried to go to members, this is what I'd get, just a 404 error. So I need to use the member home instead. So, cause remember we renamed this to use the controller token. So now I need to do, instead of members, I need to do member home and then forward slash index. And you can see this is a members only section. So let's just see what happens if we drop off the index part here, just to make sure the member home still can find the default of index. And uh-oh, a 404 error. Well, shoot, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? The problem here is that we're specifying that in order to use this member home controller, the user must pass in both a controller and an action. It's not optional the user has to pass in a controller in action to get to this section. So we could just simply drop the action part here and specify that, hey, we already know that there's a default action and that there's a default index. I could just simply say route and oops, we wanna do route action inside of our street brackets here and I can drop this route index here oops I doing that a little wrong here hold on let me fix that route this should be there we go uh, okay fix that and get rid of the route index up here and now we're saying that the name of the action for our route is index so similar to how we're saying the name of the controller using this controller token is member home and using the name of our action the or the action token you could just look for the name of our action which is index here and it's also the default on our controller so that's kind of how we're getting around if we put in the forward slash action so let's go ahead and save that actually you should probably exit out and reload this so run this now now if i do member home and I do forward slash index it's going to look at the tokens remember we have the controller token and the action token so it's going to take the URL and see the tokens and pass that request along to get my this is a members only section so everything worked there and now if I drop the index part this should work once again, this is a members only section. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more action here to our member home controller. I'm gonna say public I action result. And we're gonna say access granted. And this is gonna return a view. Let's go ahead and make that view. So I'm going to go to my member home folder under my views folder, add a new item, MVC view page. This is going to be access granted. And let's go ahead and get rid of the default code here and we'll do HTML. It's called access granted. And the body, let's go ahead and do this in an H2 tag. So make it nice and big, access is granted. All right, and save this. And now I need to be doubly sure that access granted can be found because I don't have an attribute on here. And just again to reiterate, if I save this and run this and I try to go to that access granted uh, view or access granted action, we're gonna have a problem here. So we'll do member home access granted. And there's our 404 error because it can't actually find this access granted. I have to put that attribute on it. So once you kind of start using attributes, you have to use them all throughout your controller. It just, uh, it's something you have to do. And I just wanted to show that to you. So we can do um, 
heck, let's just call this access. So we'll just name this access. There we go. I'm not gonna say access grant, I'm just gonna call it access. And let's go ahead and run this. So I'm intermixing, right? I'm actually intermixing using the action uh, token here for my index action. And I'm also specifying the name of this access granted method. Its action name is actually access. So let's do member home forward slash access. And you can see access is granted. So that's how that works. That's how routing works. You can do all sorts of wonderful things. You can pass in parameters just like you can with the default route. You can use the uh, the action and controller tokens. If you don't want to specify the names in a, as part of a string, uh, you can basically do everything that you can in the startup template, but you're setting it up right on the controller itself. And a lot of people prefer this because it explicitly says within the class where these controllers and actions could be found. And um, some people prefer being able to specify and see right within the class where that action and controller is rather than relying on some other class that it doesn't even know to be handling how that uh, controller and action is found. So it's really a matter of personal preference whether you use the startup class to define your, your routes here or you can use uh, you know, the, the routing attribute. And most people, at, to some extent, use kind of both. A lot of people, I think, prefer to use the default route with MVC, which is just this default that we set up here. Uh, believe it or not, this use MVC with default route um, that we used in the earlier video is the same default route that we set up right here in the last video. Uh, these two routes are actually identical. Um, the way that we set it up here is, is identical with the one that comes as the default with uh, use MVC with default route. So most people like to use this default route. So they would use, uh, you know, all of this, uh, comment out that, and then they would just use like use MVC with default route so that they could have default controllers. And then if there was any special exception, then they could just put it, you know, like you need to go to the members section to get to this member home controller. Uh, and they're just specifying those special use cases on the fly inside of their classes. That's a pretty typical scenario that I'd find in a lot of uh, MVC applications. So hopefully this all has not completely blown your mind and things make a, a ton of sense because you've seen the examples and I've explained it all well. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a like, uh, you know, favorite, subscribe to my series. Um, every time you subscribe, it, you know, makes fairy get its wings and, you know, uh, you get a little sprinkled of fairy dust sprinkled all over you and you can fly. Well, no, not really. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.